And to outkick the show, I am your fearless leader, Clay Travis. I hope all of you are having fantastic Tuesdays wherever you may go. We have got sports news in the NFL exploding everywhere uh, simultaneously. Uh, if you're just hopping in with us, we did a morning show. You can go watch a big breakdown of the Tom Brady news in particular uh, that we did right at 9 a.m. Eastern. Uh, but if you're just hanging out now, uh, Tom Brady officially breaking up with the New England Patriots. They are never, ever, ever getting back together again. Where is he going to go? It looks like the likelihood is that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are the favorite right now or the LA Chargers on the outside. Teddy Bridgewater. Teddy Bridgewater to the Carolina Panthers being reunited with Joe Brady. We will talk about it. Phillip Rivers to Indy on a one-year $25 million deal. New quarterback for the Colts. Where is Cam going to go? Where is Jameis going to go? What are the Bears going to do, among other things? Are they after Andy Dalton and Nick Foles? And so many different things to hit as we roll through. But we begin with Brady. Major shocking breaking news we had live on the radio show this morning. Tom Brady riding off into the New England Patriots sunset. Where is he going to go? The two favorites right now, according to Fox Bet, are... The, uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, which have become a prohibitive favorite. I'm going to look at the absolute latest uh, data there for, uh, the, uh, for where Tom Brady is going to go according to Fox Bet as we bet into, uh, into the uh, afternoon here. Um, and Tom Brady is favored right now. Let's see. Tom Brady is uh, he's off the board. Fox Bet has taken Tom Brady off the board. That's how much of a favorite he is to go to uh, right now, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Got an incredibly talented group of wide receivers down there. Mike Evans and uh, and everybody's been on me for forgetting his name earlier in the day. Uh, and then I talked about him later in the morning. Uh, in the morning, you ever have guys' names that you just forget, and for whatever reason you can't remember. Uh, no matter what, and you're like, why can I not remember that guy's name? Uh, that's the way I am with the Tampa Bay Bucks receiving core. Uh, they have got a uh, incredibly talented receiving core. We already talked about this. Lots of uh, lots of young talent uh, there. I think Mike Evans, top five wide receiver in the NFL. I can only imagine what he would be like with a quarterback that could actually regularly throw to him. Uh, okay, so that is a story that is worth following. The other one is. And I believe this is intriguing. Uh, what exactly are the Chargers doing? They are the unbelievable side chick of the NFL market in LA. They need to sell tickets in the new SoFi Stadium. Is it possible that it could make sense for Tom Brady to go back to California, back to LA? Yes, it is. I think it's less likely because the Chargers right now uh, have such a tremendous difficulty and being able to get past Patrick Mahomes, that I think it's less likely. So I think Tom Brady is going to end up with the Bucks. He'll go with Godwin. He'll go with Evans. He'll go with O.J. Howard. Cameron Brait, I believe, is the tight end there. And uh, I believe that that is the direction uh, we are headed before all is said and done there. Uh, how about Teddy Bridgewater to the Panthers? I think we under-analyze uh, this because we didn't think enough about Joe Brady having been with the Saints, knowing Teddy Bridgewater well. Joe Brady obviously did a great job with Joe Burrow, but the Panthers basically let Cam Newton go uh, in an awkward, uh, you know, uh, conscious uncoupling to steal from Gwyneth Paltrow. Uh, and as a result, I like the move. I, I think the Panthers with Teddy Bridgewater makes a lot of sense. What that does is free up Cam Newton, and I can give you the odds right now on where Cam Newton is uh, most likely to go. Cam Newton's next team right now favored to be the Chicago Bears, according to Fox Bet, followed by the Chargers, uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, that would be obviously if they swing and miss on uh, one of those two teams going to swing and miss on Tom Brady. The Dolphins, the Lions, the Patriots, the Vegas Raiders, and the Colts. A lot of different moving parts there. I think the one that makes the most sense is, honestly, uh, L.A., because Cam Newton has always wanted to be an icon. To me, Cam Newton to the Chargers makes the most sense, assuming he is healthy enough to go. I even think if they can't trade him, 
that Cam Newton could be released. And in order to pass a physical, it may take a little while for him to be healthy enough to be able to play. Uh, I also think that the Chicago Bears are in an intriguing position because they're clearly trying to replace uh, Mitch Trubisky, who's never going to over outlive being drafted above Patrick Mahomes and drafted above Deshaun Watson. Uh, but to me, Andy Dalton and Nick Foles are both the guys that have gotten the most attention as potential guys who could go to Chicago and give them a run. Maybe Jameis Winston, although he feels like a little bit more like Mitch Trubisky. Uh, We'll see what exactly ends up happening with the Chicago Bears. On Jameis Winston's front, I can't imagine at this point that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers can go back to him hat in hand and say, you were our guy all along after this long a flirtation uh, with, uh, with Tom Brady. But I think it's clear that Jameis doesn't really have a starting gig anywhere Although, we'll get to this in a sec, I would love the idea of the Patriots basically switching quarterbacks, sending Brady down to Tampa and picking up Jameis Winston. That would be the ultimate test for Bill Belichick. You take Jameis Winston to the playoffs and make that guy a Super Bowl contender, there's no doubt that you were the reason why the Patriots had an incredible dynasty. But I don't think Jameis has a lot of options out there as a starter. I don't think there are very many teams that are interested in and a guy in the 30-30 club. Now, what are the Patriots going to do? Right now, they are sitting on Jarrett Stidham. They theoretically could make some moves and go try to get a new, younger quarterback. But I kind of think they're going to end up with somebody like Andy Dalton. Uh, Maybe they make a move to try to get Nick Foles. Uh, Maybe they go after Jameis Winston. A quarterback musical chairs is going, and I don't see any good options right now for the New England Patriots. Because you know... Tom Brady has left. Maybe they can go after Cam Newton. I don't know if that makes a lot of sense in the long run in uh, in New England. There are a lot of guys that have not necessarily had tremendous levels of success that will be out there looking for another shot. Whether it is Cam Newton, whether it is Andy Dalton, whether it is Nick Foles if the Jags decide to trade him, whether it is Jameis Winston. Maybe, possibly, there is a decision made by Belichick to go back into... Uh, the draft, the trade, to try to put together some assets. Maybe he rolls with Jared Stidham, lets the Patriots hit rock bottom, comes in next year and does whatever it takes to go get Trevor Lawrence or somebody else that he has fallen in love with. I'm not sure, but it could possibly be the Jared Stidham era that is about to begin uh, in New England. All of this, absolutely fantastic. So many different moving parts here. I love it. We'll be talking a lot about it on Outkick the Coverage, my radio show, Nationwide, Sirius XM Channel 83 tomorrow. Uh, I appreciate all of you hanging out. I'm going to go write a big piece on the coronavirus. Uh, I've been thinking a lot about it. Uh, My concern here is that we are moving into major decisions being made for an economic perspective without considering all the cost, right? Uh, In order to shut down the nation's economy, are we paying essentially a trillion, trillions of dollar tax to fight a virus when the smarter play might be to just let the virus uh, run through us while being smart about it? Like to me, the smartest play, and somebody can explain to this why, explain to me why this is not the smartest play, is we tell everybody under the age of 60 to go on about your normal lives. But we tell everyone above the age of 60 that they need to quarantine themselves. And we tell everybody who's under the age of 60 who statistically are not victims of this virus, hey, don't interact with senior citizens. Senior citizens, do not go out and about for the next two to four to six weeks. Stay primarily inside. We will work with you to get food to you. We will try to limit the overall serious infection rate among the elderly, particularly we are going to guard nursing homes so we don't have another situation arise like happened in Washington. That, to me, seems like the most effective way to balance the economy while also protecting people who have major issues. Somebody just said, how about people under 60 that have health issues? Don't go out! If you believe that you are likely to be a victim of the coronavirus because you are either a senior citizen and statistically in danger or you have a suppressed immune system for some reason, protect yourself. But if you are like me and you are otherwise healthy, 
uh, or you are younger than me and you're in college or you got kids who seem to have no impact at all, put them in school. Let them learn. Don't undertake the shutting down of a national economy to protect almost entirely the elderly. Look, I hate death. I wish nobody died. I wish for the rest of all time that we could have immortality. I don't want anybody that I love to ever die. Just like everybody who's watching this right now. Why can't we have different rules for different people? Instead of shutting down the economy. Look, most people who are a senior citizens and not in good health are not working. So why can't we make the decision for people who are in uh, weak immune systems or in particular danger from this virus again, 97% of the people who are dying in Italy are over the age of 60 slanted very heavily towards over the age of 80. I am 40, relatively healthy I can be out and about coaching Little League Baseball taking my kids to dinner living my life and keeping the economy going why would you not want that to happen? I don't understand why we can't balance protect the ones who need to be protected the most the rest of us take the risk that something might happen to us even though we know it is an incredibly low rate and likelihood of occurring. I don't understand that. I'm going to write on it. Uh, it's, it's like anybody who questions the consensus opinion is an awful human being right now. We have moved into so aggressively into emotion that if I say anything other than everybody go in your houses, cover yourselves, lock all the windows, lock all the doors, don't go outside for a month, it's like people don't understand that, right? Uh, that that's not necessarily the most appropriate move. And by the way, there are major consequences from an economic recession. When people lose their jobs, when people lose their livelihoods, depression uh, and, uh, and death is the result of joblessness and an economic downturn too. Lots of suicides, lots of self-isolation. It's like we've determined only by listening to the epidemiologist what the costs are to a nation and to a world of a virus that has a relatively low mortality rate according to historic pandemics that we have previously dealt with throughout humankind. And so I think we've rushed into a series of decisions without contemplating all of the consequences of those decisions. And that troubles me as a guy who believes in a robust and uninhibited First Amendment. We should be debating the appropriate ways to respond. People are going to die but people always die. 6,250 people die every hour. People who are old die every day. I just I don't think we're making strong and sound economic decisions based on a strong likelihood of, uh, of, of, of total understanding of this virus. Trying to be rational, trying to be reasonable. I understand nobody wants to be rational and reasonable right now. My name is Clay Travis. This has been Outkick the Show. I'm writing a big piece on this. I'll probably publish it tomorrow uh, with a longer form version and written content of my thoughts on the coronavirus uh, and those will be up. But in the meantime, enjoy the sideshow of Tom Brady. Be able to, uh, be able to, uh, to enjoy the last sports that we may have for a very long time. Kisses. d unless you need to s -bap. I'm Clay Travis and this has been Outkick the Show. Love you. Thank you, Facebook. See y'all.